Mr. and Mrs. Heyman, at any point tonight, while we're trying to make communication with you, we'd love to learn more about you. And we hear somebody plain as day walk down the hallway on the second floor. And so we came back in and we went all over the house and there was nothing. Holy crap. Whoa, what the hell? Ooh, did you hear that voice? Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Yes. And I was like, is anybody here, you know, or anything? And there was a growl. If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking <laughs> crazy, isn't it? That is lighter. <laughs> that is it. Oh, oh, something just touched my hand. Well, gentlemen, we are officially inside the Heyman house, and this is one of the coolest old historic homes that I think we've investigated in years. Absolutely. Now, one thing about this house is that ever since it broke onto the paranormal scene two years ago, it has been absolutely flooded with paranormal investigators because of the amount of activity that this house has. It's believed the former residents are still here and maybe even some spirits that come and go as they please. But when the owner, Teresa, and her husband bought this house, they were shocked at how much activity this place had. The house was built in 1894 and it was built by William Edgar Heyman. He was the prosecuting attorney in Sutton for eight years in the late 1800s. When we first bought the house, I mean, you have to understand it was in very bad shape. So we were, my husband and I were really working on it. And he was up here one day by himself. I was homesick and he was down in the basement. Well, I come up, I finally decided to come up and check on him because I couldn't get a hold of him. So I come up and um, I tried to come in the front door with my key and I, I couldn't get in. So I just went around back and came in the back door, used my key and come in the back door. And I hollered at him and he, of course he came upstairs and I told him, I was like, you know, the front door's not opening. He said it was just opening a little bit ago. And I was like, well, I couldn't get in. Even with my key, I couldn't get in. And I just happened to get to looking and there's a little slide lock on the door and I was like, hold on. So I, I just pushed the door back and I just slid the little lock over. And when I slid it, I mean, the door just come right open. And he just looked at me. My husband, you have to understand, he's never had anything to do with the paranormal. So when I told him, I was like, well, you know, that lock was on there. And he told me, he said, now, Teresa, he said, I specifically left that door unlocked. He was like, I know that door was unlocked. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about this basement one thing that people believe amplifies paranormal activity is the presence of running water. And if you look right here down by our feet, there is actually a small spring that runs through this basement. And this right here might be the reason for the curious and unexplainable things that happen inside this house. They believe this is a good conduit for energy. And maybe that's why the spirits are so active here at the Heyman house. In addition to the river right outside, right across the street. That's right. So, I mean, it's just it's like a conflux. That same day when he was in the basement, he said that he was down there and he was draining the hot water tank. And he said that there was, and he, he didn't know what it was. He said it was probably six inches. He said it was kind of oval round. And he said it was under the stairs, the steps. And he said it was flickering. And he said, Tracy, he said, I sat there and looked at, I watched that thing. He said, for a good minute. And the water stopped to the hot water tank. He said, so, you know, he said, I got it started again and turned back around. He said, and it was gone. So, I mean, he was like, what did I see? <laughs> Which I told him, I said, you probably saw an orb. Uh, you probably saw a spirit. It is very creepy. It's not as big as you would think it would be down here, which it's, it's a lot, it's very, confining down here and yeah. definitely feels completely different from the rest of the house. So I'll be interested to see how that adds up later. Emma, Mr. Heyman's first wife, she passed away in a house. She was 43. We can't find a death certificate. I can't find a death certificate anywhere. Everybody's looked for it. 
but I did, we did find a small little newspaper clipping and all it said was uh, Mrs. Heyman had passed away at her home and would be buried there. And that's, that's it. I mean, it was just a very small thing. And then Mr. Heyman, he, seven years after that, he married uh, Ethel. It was his second wife. And uh, she passed away in the house. She had breast cancer. And she, she passed away here in the house in 1932. These bedrooms up here have been known for their paranormal activity, the movement, the figures, and a lot of people believe that's the Heyman family. Uh, Mr. Heyman had two wives, starting with Emma. She died in the house, and then Ethel also died in the house. A lot of people hear women's voices, people, women screaming, women crying. And uh, Teresa even pointed out uh, that, that she had a, a mother and daughter come through and just do their own little self-guided tour. And she said in one of the bathrooms up here, they saw a full apparition of a lady crying with her face in her hands, like she was crying at the sink of the bathroom. So far, a lot of potential for residual yeah, hauntings here. Residual hauntings, but if there was an intelligent energy of the family, to me, this house with as beautiful as it is, if I had lived here and this was my home and I died, I would stay here. Yeah, like why would you yeah. want to leave? Yeah, this house is amazing. Yeah. We have a tall, slender, um, gray-like fi figure, which I honestly think, and a lot of people think that it's Mr. Heyman still here. We was leaving one day and we got out in the driveway and we hear somebody playing his day walk down the hallway on the second floor. And my husband looked at me, he was like, Teresa, somebody's in the house. And I was like, okay. I said, no, there's not, but we'll go in and look. And so we came back in and we went all over the house and there was nothing, there was nobody. And I think Mr. Heyman paces, so he paces on the second floor. Mr. and Mrs. Heyman? My name's Steve. My friends Ryan and Dave here. We're just gonna be visiting tonight. We're here with permission from Teresa. We hope that it's okay with you. At any point tonight, while we're trying to make communication with you, we'd love to learn more about you. As long as you're comfortable and you're okay with that, we hope that you are. The gentleman that we bought the house from, I didn't get to talk to him very much, but the one time I did talk to him, he, I asked him about the house and he said that he had only had one thing happen to him and he said he had stopped here on his way home from work. He said he'd, he'd worked out of town and he said, I was just tired. He says, I stopped there to spend the night and he said, I was in the room upstairs, which is the blue room. We call it the blue room. And he said, I wake up in the middle of the night. He said, there's a woman standing there looking at me. And he was like, I'm not gonna lie, I got up and went to Mason County. He said, I left, I went home. He said, I didn't want no part of that. But in the attic, Mr. Heyman is in the attic a lot. We call the one room up there, it's the, they call it the octagon room, but we believe it was his office. To me, this is probably my favorite room in the house because it's just, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's creepy. The vibe in here is weird. And, uh, you know, like you were saying, this was supposedly his office, and I'm sure he would have spent a lot of time in here overlooking the city and everything like that. And I'm excited to, to come back up here later and, and investigate up here. West Virginia Paranormal were here, and they were in the attic, and they were in what we call Mr. Heyman's office, and they're just, you know, talking, and next thing you know, I mean, you hear a woman scream. I mean, I was at home watching it live, and the scream, it clearly came from inside the house. That experience that she talked about with that scream, that was in this room. Oh, I didn't know okay. that. With that loud screaming, that was this room. So this is definitely gonna have to be a focus tonight on the investigation. Um, to the sides of the hallway upstairs, on this side, on the left side, there's a huge room now that room there, it has a lot of activity. Actually, at one point I was up there cleaning 
and I had a puff of wind just, I mean, it hit me right in the face and it blew my hair out. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I just kind of stood there and I was like, is anybody here, you know, or anything? And there was a growl. And now that's the only time I can say that I've ever been to where I left. And I did. I came downstairs and I didn't want to be part of that and I left. Well, the sun is already down now. It's that time of year. It gets dark at five o'clock, but that gives us a lot more time to investigate. So it's a little bit after eight o'clock right now. And I think it's time for us to get ready to set up abandonment, leave this house alone, let the cameras roll and see what they capture, and then come back and hit the ground running and see if there are any spirits or energies left here at the Heyman house that want to talk to us. Absolutely. Let's do it, gentlemen. Cool. Next room. Whoa. The REM pod just went off up here. Hold on. Rolling. Abandonment. If you're here with me, if you're here with me, can you set off that device again? Can you touch that just like you did? Can you touch that for me again? Can you touch that for me again? Can you touch that for me again? Mr. Heyman, if you're up here, we'd love to talk to you. If you could show yourself to us, if you could touch some of these lights that we have set up, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Heymond House. This is the first floor entryway action cam. All right, if anyone is here with us, we're getting ready to leave the house. We have a lot of toys that you can play with, but this one in front of me, this one's the most important. If you touch this, you'll feel it give you energy, and uh, then you can use that to make stuff happen throughout the rest of the house. Beautiful. All right, we're leaving! We said earlier, we're just here to communicate with you if you want to. We understand that we're guests in your house. We're here to help support your house, to help the current owners, the current caretakers, if you will. We're here to help them keep your house. What was in. that? Who's here? 
It was like a cl- clanking sound. Yeah, it was like behind you, wasn't it? I heard it from over here. Was it? So we're here with the utmost respect for for you and in your house. So we hope that you're okay with that. EVP, this is the Heyman House, second floor, first session. We've heard that you like to communicate a lot with with the living, with people like us. Is it true? There are some devices here that if you touch them or get close to them, that they'll light up, probably make a sound. You probably know by now they won't hurt you. If you would do that, get close to something like that, it'll help us know that you're here. If you want, if you want to do that, of course. You do this. Like, see this device here? You reach out and touch it. See, so it does my finger. That's my energy. Can you make one and bring it over to my finger? I just had a weird, I don't want to say it's like, cause like I don't believe I'm sensitive or at least not in a vision type of way, but I had this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we did not do it. That's I, just I just heard something in here. Movement. Yeah, I heard it. I just had a weird, I don't want to say it's like, at least not in a vision type of way, but I have whoa, this, whoa, whoa, whoa. but I have whoa, this, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we did not do it. Let's do it. What's weird was I had this feeling like someone fell down these stairs. Is that true? Did someone fall down these stairs right here? There's an orange light sitting on the banister right over here. If you would like to speak to us, try and speak right into that orange light so that we can hear your voice. so that we can hear your voice. Here, let's set this up, up if we can. That was me. See how I did that? See how I walked over and touched that? And it lit up? Can you do that to let us know that you're here? And if you don't want to come downstairs, you can do the one right up here at the top of the steps. There's one right up there as well. Steve is setting up the EDI meter, a meter that measures ambient temperature, responds to changes in the EMF, barometric pressure and temperature of the environment. Well, it hit a point, that, that millimeter just hit a point one when you did that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 2.9, man. I literally was recording it as it hit a 2.9. Really? When that mail was going off. And it was right as soon as Steve walked up to it and then walked away. 
Was that you right here on the stairs when Steve set that down? If you walk up to that box with the green and orange lights on it, it'll let us know that you're here. And that's what happened when it lit up. Can you do it again for us? I'm about ready to take my shoes off. I don't know, I was thinking the same thing. Put them on to go to the basement, but that's about it. All right, so here's what we're gonna have to do, guys. Because, I don't know if you can see, when I shoot into this room, the floors in this Heyman house are so clean that I can see the reflection of the bed frame <laughs> in the floor like it's water, which is beautiful. Yeah. But the wax on the floor is causing our shoes to be mm -hmm. very squeaky. So we're gonna have to take our shoes off in order to make this work. Yes, we are. Nobody bump this chair because the music box is going to be pointed over this direction. Okay. Oh, God. Calibrating. Yeah, I don't like that room. <laughs> yeah, I just run that corner. I'm like, yeah, just not a good vibe. Hello to anyone who is here. My name is Ryan, this is Steve, and that's Dave. We're gonna be spending the night here tonight. We hope that you'll come out and talk to us, whoever you are, whether you're a part of the Heyman family or someone that lived here after. We think you have a beautiful house and the current owner, Teresa, she invited us in. Our goal for being here is to talk to you and for you to show us that you can still communicate with us after death, after you pass on. And we'd love for you to come out and show us that you're still here. We'd love to hear your story. Because there's a lot of people that want to know if you're still here. Is there someone in this room that's, that's upset, that's angry for some reason, any reason at all? Let us know by making a, maybe knocking on the wall. Maybe you see the door, you can move the door. Something like that. We're not trying to be disrespectful or rude. We're just, just addressing the way maybe that. What was that? Whoa. I heard that. Make communication. It was in the closet. Just addressing the way maybe that. What was that? Whoa. Just addressing the way maybe that... What was Whoa. that? Whoa! I heard whatever that was. You want the door open or closed? I'll help if you'll permit me. If I open it... This way. If I do that... And you want it closed, can you knock on something or move something in there again? What is that? Dude, some. Wait, 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 wait. Something was moving in there. Yeah. What are you moving? Is it something you want us to find? You trying to share something with us? Or did you want the door closed? It's really weird that we haven't heard that sound from inside the closet again. I don't know. That was pretty freaky. Yeah. Sounded like someone rummaging around through the stuff in there. I just did that one time. I swear I was waiting for the door to slam shut. Mm-hmm.
Mr. Heyman. I'm going to set this right here. Wait for it to reset. That is not me. Whoa. Whoa. Hello? Holy crap. Whoa, what the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Let it go, let it go. Hello? Holy crap. Whoa. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Holy crap. Whoa. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Did you hear that voice when that went off? No. What the hell? Mr. Heyman, were you waiting for us? If that's you, can you please step away from that? Can you please step over here towards us, sir? What the hell? Mr. Heyman, here's a device right here in my hand. I'm gonna put it right up here in the window so. Can you go touch that device there? Could you please step away from the device? Please? Or maybe you're not Mr. Heyman. Or if you're someone different and you're not W.E. Heyman, can you please step away from it now? Emma? Ethel? Are you the one who growls? What was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. I heard that. That was like a growl, dude. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Can you push that thing over here if that's you? Move it back towards me a little bit. Okay, right, right, it's going off. Okay, move it back towards going off. That is, that is where we're at. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, uh, that's weird. Yeah. I thought it was something about that spot that it was sitting on. So I moved it out of that spot and it stopped going off. And I thought, okay, well, naturally, if it's something de debunkable, when I move it back, because I didn't reset it, when I move it back, it should pick up on that static again, and it should alarm. And then you move it back, and it, it, it didn't. Hmm. Mr. Heyman, is that you? Oh, f oh. Something just touched my hand. Holy sh Dude, can you please take this? <laughs> oh my god, that scared me to death. I've never felt a touch that hard on my hand before. I am not even kidding you, man. It was right across my fingertips. And literally every hair on my body is standing up. <laughs> every hair. Did you just touch Ryan? If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking <laughs> craziness, man. Okay. I didn't mean to react like that, it's just you startled me is all. When I walked out there, did you come over here again with me? That scared the out of me. I just saw something fly straight up in between you two. I was standing here filming you guys. And I had my other hand behind my back like this. And it was like a c icy cold contact on my fingers and it went across my hand. Hey Rod, yeah. let's see. This one's really, very rarely does the EMF trip on this one. 
Let's see what it does. Right next to it or near it or whatever. There's no there's no EMF right here. No. So what is setting that off? This attic is charged with paranormal activity. The disembodied voices. Hello? What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? A cold and noticeable touch on my hand. Oh! oh. Something just touched my hand. Holy sh But in regards to the REM pod, at first it seemed responsive. Every hair. Did you just touch Ryan? If you did, light that up. Oh, this is freaking craziness, man. Now, it's just constant. There's no, there's no EMF right here. No. So what is setting that off? But the REM pod sat in this area for over an hour during the abandonment and was completely silent. But as it turns out, the answer to our question is a full floor below us. It is literally right. Below the static ball, you don't think that thing's putting off, off that much static? You could turn it off. All the way over here. Yeah, turn it off. Turn this thing off. Immediately. Are you for real? It's pretty strong. This thing puts off that much static. Turn, turn it back on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Listen. Yeah. That's crazy. That's some freaking juice right there. This plasma ball has filled this whole third floor with so much static energy that it's triggering the REM pod almost to its max. And while this explains why we couldn't get the REM pod to stop alarming, it also could be why the third floor was off the charts with paranormal activity. It was a constant energy source for the spirits of the Heyman house to use in order to interact with us. The question is, how long will that energy last after the plasma ball is turned off? As we take a short break to come up with a game plan for the rest of the night, we leave this camera rolling in the attic. Now that that's rolling, I'm going to show the camera, the motion sensor, so that's what it'll look like. I'm headed upstairs. Going in. All right. Steve and I, are down here on the first floor and we're going to try to do some investigating. We're going to split up just a little bit. And Ryan went back to the attic for some reason. I feel like he is strangely drawn to that attic tonight. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Which is. But she's the only one that was really touched up there. So true. Mr. Haymond, they said that they believe that this is your office. If I owned this house, this would be my choice for my office as well. 
such a beautiful view. of the river. Okay, so we've got two different cat balls set up and then we have the music box set up. So if there's anything around, hopefully it'll set it off. Can you go down to the second floor and walk in front of those little white boxes on the floor? If you did that, that would really, really scare Dave and Steve. Pretty funny. At the top of the stairs, walk straight down the hallway until you get to the window. How about Emma? Emma, are you here with us? Emma Heyman, are you here with us? If you are, could you set off one of these devices? What happens after we die? Is there more after we die? In what way do we transform? I don't know, maybe they'll try communicating more with you, Steve. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Thank you. See how easy that is to do? We appreciate that. Can you do that again? Oh, I've got static all over me right now. Yeah. This whole room. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Who was it that made that ball go off? Can you say your name in three, two, one? So it's weird because when we first started investigating tonight, after we started on the second floor, we came up here and this was like a hot spot. I was touched on the hand. Um, we were hearing voices, but it's like it's gone quiet. Really quiet, too quiet even. Yeah, that was loud as can be. What do you think? You want to go over to the kitchen for a minute? Yeah, we're going to this wall. Who was it that Teresa heard growl at her up here? I'm by myself up here now. Can you do something to frighten me out of the house? That's what we came here for. Can you slam a door up here? We heard you like to mess with the doors and move them. We'd love to be able to see that. Hello, if there's anybody in here with us, could you? Could you come have a chat with us? Ryan. That was not Ryan. That's twice we've heard that now. Oh 
Did you? Can you push that ball down the little steps right there? step before you come down onto the steps okay and we just heard it sounded like a, a door a thump a thud or something like that do you want to go see if you can yeah and i know it was nothing on the third floor because i didn't hear anything up there and if it would have been that door to the attic yeah. i for sure would have picked it up sense. and heard it captured it so um, i'm going to go upstairs to the second floor i'm going to try a couple doors okay and see if it actually we can recreate that sound okay do you want to try the attic door first, just in case? I don't know, man. If, if, if it would have been the attic door, I would have heard it. Okay. Uh, I think for sure it was definitely here on the second floor. What about this one? This is the closet at the very top of the stairs here. Do it again. Too clean. No. That's too clean. This is the... Bathroom door here. No. Still too clean. No. Is that it? No. Uh, here, I'm going to go into the servants. I'm going into the servants' quarters. That closet that we kept hearing the sounds in earlier, I'm going to try that. Okay. So that would be your, what, right above? And I'm just gonna, since since you said it wasn't too noticeable, I'm just gonna push on it. All right. Do it again. Dude. Dude, that's. Dude, that is, that's it. That, yeah. Like that? Oh, that, is, that was it. That is lighter. That is it. Yeah, that's this servant's closet right here. Which one? Where? Oh, in here. Right, right, right. It's the exact same closet earlier where we were getting the the weird sounds from inside of. That right. was that was yeah. it. That was, was the wrong sounds. But there's one area of the house that we haven't gotten to investigate yet, and I think it would be a good idea to to go check it out. It's the the basement. And what if to end the night we did a an Estes method spirit box session? Good job. Down there in the basement. Let's do it. You so, want to simultaneously do like a mini abandonment in this room? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You want to get just an action cam and yeah, and a and a REM pod, action cam, REM pod recorder. Yeah. In this room while we're in the basement, bare bones. Because if we've had activity in this room with that door twice tonight, mm -hmm. yeah. we should probably set something up on that. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. We are in the basement yep. of the Heyman house. And we are going to be doing an Estes Method Spirit Box session. Dave is listening. If there's anyone down here in the basement with us, my name is Ryan, this is Steve. In the other room, that's Dave. I thought I heard something say Steve. Yeah, this is Steve. Hello. Yes. It said yes. What's your name? Whoever said my name, I'd like to know your name. I think it's fair.
I'd like to know your name, but would you please go over to Dave who's sitting in the chair and tell me your name through his his device. It's kind of like a megaphone or a microphone. Or a telephone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a way to talk to us. Her? Who is who is her? Is there a lady here? Is there a lady of the house here? Um, there was a male voice there, but I could not make it out. Mr. Hammond? Yes? Nice to meet you, sir. We love your house. A very low okay. Would we be would we be able to maybe come back and visit again sometime? With your blessing, sir? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We sure can, sir. We can hear you. Would we have your blessing to come back to the house sometime? Female. Couldn't make it out. Is it is, is this Emma or Ethel? Female, yes. I actually heard it all the way in here. Yeah. Who has the short, dark hair? Emma, we heard from Teresa. She alluded that maybe your husband, Mr. Haymond, may have wanted to keep you close and may have buried you here on property. Is that true? Yes. Whereabouts are you buried? Are they? Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Or did they move you to a cemetery? Because we know you have a grave marker in a cemetery with your husband. Did they move your body, Emma, or did you, are you still here buried on property? Can you let us know? Mr. Heyman, Emma, are you still here? Can you give us more answers, please? What you told us is is great information, but it's a little a little vague. Are you still here on the property, or did they move you? If you're on the property, say yes. Where? Right here in this corner. Are you guys tired? Are you ru running out of energy to communicate? Is that it? I don't know. I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. Are you still you still have the headphones on? I just took them off to say that. This has been a bizarre spirit box session. When Teresa told us about one single newspaper article. But I did, we did find a small little newspaper clipping and all it said was uh, Mrs. Heyman had passed away at her home and would be buried there. And that's, that's it. I mean, it was just a very small thing. We had no idea it would lead to this intelligent conversation with a man that we believe to be Mr. Heyman. Mr. Heyman? Yes? Emma Haymond has a grave marker in Buchanan, West Virginia, with her husband, and no one has found evidence of a gravesite here on the property of this house. 
but this man seems to think that she's still here. Emma, we heard from Teresa, she alluded that maybe your husband, Mr. Haymond, may have wanted to keep you close and may have buried you here on property. Is that true? Yes. Are you still there? Are you still buried there? Or did they move you to a cemetery? It's hard to say for sure. More research needs to be done to find out the true whereabouts of Emma Heyman's remains. If she is still here at the house in Sutton, it would most definitely explain the paranormal activity. Hello? Holy crap. What the hell? Ooh. Did you hear that voice? Oh! oh. Something just touched my hand. We intend to return as soon as we can to help get more answers. And you too can come investigate this house. The more research that's done, the closer we all are to answers. We have the Facebook page, which is The Haunted Heyman. And you can send me a message through there and you know we'll answer you through there. Um, hopefully this year, I wanna get it to where I'm gonna be able to um, let the teens come in on Friday and stay till Sunday if they want to because here, you know, we have beds, we have showers, we have, you know, running water, we have heat. We have a full kitchen to where, you know, if you wanted to stay the weekend, you could. You know, there, everything is here. Just, you know, send a message to me through Facebook or you can send it to me for email and it's my last name, Frame, F-R-A-M-E, and in this period, then it's Heyman, H-A-Y-M-O-N-D, at yahoo.com and you can get a hold of me that way too. All right guys, so thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. We really appreciate it. Believe it or not, that does help. So thank you for that. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button and uh, turn on your bell notifications, turn them all on. So that way you don't miss anything anytime we upload and uh, make sure to check us out on all of our other social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all of that fun stuff. And again, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next episode.